Today we're going to talk about slope of a line. And you've seen slope before, rise over run, things like that. Um, it's kind of a review, some new stuff, uh, and uh, you'll see that. So put slope of a line at the top of your page and today's date in the top right corner. Okay, um, so what is slope exactly? And you have to write all this down. Slope equals, slope is, is is equals, right? The vertical change over the horizontal change. The vertical change over the horizontal change. And it's also the change in y over the change in x. And sometimes that's represented as change in y over change in x. Uh, this delta symbol means change. So change in y, that's a triangle, right? It's called a delta symbol over change in x. That's a Greek thing. Um, so change in y over change in x. It's rise over run. All these things. Vertical change. And, and that's what rise is. Rise is the vertical change. It's how much it goes up or down, right? And then run is horizontal change. How much it goes side to side. Um, so that's, that's important. So make sure all of this gets written down. Okay. Now, a couple things. Make some pretty rudimentary graphs that look like this. Get all four of these graphs down. Um, this, if you're skiing and you're going up like this guy, uh, that is a positive slope. So put here, make, make sure you draw this graph and put positive. And if, if you were uh, the head of a company and your line is going up and this was money, you would be making money, and that's a positive thing. So that's a positive slope. Here, you probably guessed by now, this is going down. So this guy's going downhill, and if you were the head of a company, you would be losing money, which is a negative thing. So that's a negative slope. Now this third one's kind of weird. Uh, it's basically just a flat horizontal line. And if you related to skiing or sledding or anything with the slope, let's say you're sledding and you are on the top of the hill, you're this guy right here and you're sledding, and it's just a flat surface like the ground, uh, like your yard or something, that is no slope. Here, there is no slope, right? I mean, you're not going anywhere. If you're sledding and it's flat, you're not going anywhere, or skiing for that matter. Here, a straight vertical line this would be an undefined slope. Undefined. So that's important. Make sure all this stuff is out. You don't have to draw these little guys. These are just to, to kind of illustrate. But that is an undefined slope. All right. This next part, very important. You're going to be using this for a long time. And these are called subscripts. So... They're like uh, right in, they're kind of like uh, exponents, but down in the bottom. So this is y2 minus y1 over, big fraction, x2 minus x1. This is how you're going to find slope. Okay, so slope is this. That's when you have two points. And we'll use it in an example in a second. So make sure you get that down. Okay, so we're going to use it here. So I'm just going to, I know I'm going to use it, so I'm going to write it down. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Get used to writing this a lot. It says find the slope of the line that passes through 1, 7, and 9, 1. So I know that those two, those are my two points. So what we use this for is anytime we have two x's and two y's, or two different points, basically, two different coordinates, we can find the slope between them. Um, so... 1, 7 is my first point, 9, 1 is my second point. And here's how this works. This is your x and y, right? It's always x comma y. This is your x1, y1. This is your x2, y2. Now, it doesn't actually really matter which is which, as long as you make sure the x1 is with the y1 and the x2 is with the y2. Then you just plug it into the formula. So you're going to plug y2 up here, so it's going to be 1 minus y1, 7. 
over x2, which is 9, minus x1, which is 1. And here's why you do that. Remember, we go back here, and it's the vertical change, or the change in y. Change is just subtraction. You're finding the difference. You're finding the difference in the y, so we subtract the y's over the change in the x. So we subtract the x's. That's all we're doing is subtracting the y's and subtracting the x's. What you have to make sure of, though, is that you keep straight the x1 and the y1 and the x2 and the y2. Make sure you're plugging them into the right place because you don't want to do y2 minus y1, then x1 minus x2. That would throw you off. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 9 minus 1 is 8. And you would be done, but got to reduce, right? So we would do uh, divide by 2 and get negative 3 over 4. So there's our slope. Our slope is negative 3 over 4. Now, what if we were plotting that on the graph? What if we had this graph here? And we wanted to do um, 1, 7. So 1, 7, and 9, 1. Uh, it would look like this. And we can just count the rise and the run, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six would be my rise. And it went up, right? So when I go up, positive. And my run is negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think this is over one, right? So it should be eight. Um, oh, yeah. I'm on the wrong dot. Uh, so this should be negative eight. So up six. And to the left, 8. So that's negative 8. And that's exactly what we got. But this way, we can just do it without having to graph using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So you don't have to graph it. All right. Try number 2 on your own. Okay, welcome back. Find the slope of the line that passes through negative 2, negative 3, and 4, 6. So again, we're going to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'll just label them up here. That's my x1, y1, and there's my x2, y2. So my y2 looks to be 6 minus my y1, which is negative 3. I'm going to put it in parentheses so those negatives aren't next to each other. My x2 is 4 minus my x1, which is negative 2. Keep, change, opposite, keep, change, opposite. So we did that because it's subtraction, right? 6 plus 3 is 9, 4 plus 2 is 6. Now, here's the deal with slope. You always keep it as improper because you just want a ratio, rise to run. You never keep it as a mixed fraction, so always keep it improper. We could divide these by 3 and get 3 over 2. So our slope is our rise would be 3, our run would be 2. And if we were to graph these, we'd get the same thing. So our slope is 3 over 2. Never change it to 1 and 1 half. All right. Got to write these down. Uh, constant rate of change just means linear, right? I mean, if it's consistent, if it's constant, it is linear. It goes in the same direction every time. A variable rate of change, it varies, it changes, is nonlinear. So a constant rate of change is linear, variable rate of change, nonlinear. I want you to draw the graphs of 3, 4, 5, and 6, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just make them just like this, nice and easy, and say whether they are a constant rate of change or a variable rate of change. All right, let's look at number three. 
Number three, it's linear, right? It goes in the same direction the same time, the whole time. It has a definite slope, so it is constant. It constantly has the same slope. This one, though, number four, it changes. It's nonlinear. That means it is a variable rate of change because the slope would vary. The slope would never stay the same. It's not consistent. Number five, again, it changes, right? It varies. It is variable, a variable rate of change. Number six has the same slope the whole time. It goes in the same direction. It goes up consistently. It's constant. It is a constant rate of change. Okay, the big thing I want you to take out of this one, though, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's the slope. That's really important. So make sure, if, if you don't understand anything, make sure you understand that. All right, great job.